আসতে চেয়ে একটা কথা বলতে সবাই চল যাও অনেক দূরে দূরে জায়গায় অনেক সুন্দর মেয়ে আছে সুন্দর সব কিছু আছে বাংলাদেশে আজকে নতুন হলো বর্ডারগুলা অনেক আগে হয়েছে আমার নাইটি সেভেন্টি ওয়ানে আর অনেক সবাই একটা একা এসে মানে আমাদের টাকা ছিল না তার জন্য করেছি নাইনটিন সেভেন্টি সিক্সে যখন সবাই এটা করেছে অনেক অনেক মানুষ ছিল যে সিটে সবাই কাজ করত সবাই এটা করত সবাই ওইটা করত এটা সবসময় মানে কষ্ট কষ্ট করে হয়তো কিন্তু হলো এটা একটা মানে হলো এইভাবে আমরা থাকতাম কিন্তু প্রবলেমটা হয়েছে যখন হলো যে আমাদের পার্লামেন্টটা পার্লামেন্টটা যখন হলো ওখানে সব কিছু উঠে পড়ছে চলো দেখি Good evening, gentlemen. The council meeting shall hereby commence. The cornerstone of Bangladesh's constitution is to ensure the citizens have certain basic needs such as health, education, food, and security. So as a government, we need to pursue several public policies, including a long-term policy for population and development. Our democratic nation relies on our people, but our massive population creates enormous stress on our national resources and constrains efforts to improve the living standards of the people. With a population of already 70 million, the only thing we can do is to reduce our population growth rate. I would like to welcome our Deputy of Demographics Minister, Mohammed. Thank you. So right to the point then. According to your stats, the current population projection by the year 2020 is an estimate of 172 million people and that our current population will stabilize at around 210 million by the year 2060. That is, if replacement level fertility rates are achieved by the year 2010. Failure to reach targeted fertility rates will delay the population stabilization. Hence, it is absolutely critical that we lower our fertility rate as soon as possible. Factors that influence population stabilization efforts are, however, spread across the work of several ministries such as health, education, labor, and employment. There is much work to do, men. Much work. Join us on this journey to Bangladesh as we investigate the root of the population problem at hand and take a look at the situation from the locals' point of view. Sit, Priya, we have to talk. You are getting older, and your biological clock is ticking. Your mother and I have decided that you are to wed Mr. Bovary. He is very, very hardworking, and is doing very well in the farming business. Yes, Priya, it is for the best. He is a very good man. You will be very, very happy with him. Oh, and by the way, you will have to drop out of school to bear many children. Many, many children. Come now, Priya, you must learn your domestic duties such as cleaning and cooking from your mother. It will soon become a duty in life. Hold on a minute. Looks like we have a problem here. You see, the practice of early arranged marriage is primitive and detrimental towards our goal. The population policy encourages women to marry and have children much later, preferably after the age of 20. However, at the moment there are no laws enforcing this notion since we do want to maintain human rights and cultural traditions. But I'm telling you, sir, you are making a great mistake. Take a look at your daughter. She's beautiful and full of potential. Do you really want to subject her to, to a life without opportunities and full of, uh, lack of self fulfillment Look here, woman, as long as you live under my roof, you have no say whatsoever what goes on in this household. You'll have as many babies as I want. I don't know if we really need any more children right now. Please stop! Sir, drop your weapon. Are you aware of what you're doing? You see, domestic violence is uncommon in regions of poverty. Sir, you may not be aware, but there is a massive crisis we're facing, and it has everything to do with you. See, because it is of men like you that women have no say whatsoever in family planning matters. In fact, the average woman has over six children in their lifetime, and many more in poorer regions. The root of the problem is really the imbalance between men and women. Who are you to tell me what to do? I have a huge farm. Who do you think is going to work? Just me alone? I need children to help me. Hold on, I'm getting there, okay? So for women to be able to stand on equal grounds with men, they must be empowered. The solution lies in education and raising awareness, which will enable them to have opportunities for better careers. Just think, your wife can get her own income and have a higher pay if she was educated. This would also nullify your need to have so many children. Huh. It's dancing like a bad Wait, so you're saying she can help me by getting that education? And make money. That's and right. make money. Hmm. Come here, honey. Let's get you the education we speak of. Good morning, class. I'm Professor Ishmael, and I'll be your homeroom teacher for this year. You're all here to learn what it takes to be a strong, independent woman who needs no man. The first step is the implementation of accessible education, which is why you're all here today. Take a minute and look around. Consider the problem we have in front of us. What is the solution? 
Yes, Priya? Um, does x equal plus or minus 2? That is incorrect, Priya. The solution is to control our population growth rate, which is ultimately based on women. Yeah, you. Unfortunately, when it comes to fertility, women have no say in family planning because of the lack of gender equality. Therefore, the goal is to improve the status of women. The empowerment of women is based on the very, this very important social factor, education. Education will prevent you, young ladies from being forced into a life of desolate housework. Education will prevent you from having to work in the rice fields all day. Education will prevent you from manufacturing textiles in a dangerous factory with substandard working conditions. Education will create for you opportunities and aspirations later in life. Education will provide you with influence and affluence, abolishing the state of destitution. Do you understand now? The future is you. সিন্ধু So in an effort to decrease fertility rate, right, the government of Bangladesh seeks to make modern methods of contraception more accessible, and the most effective method, the use of condoms. This way, couples can continue having fun without the risk of conceiving another child. So using condoms will also greatly inhibit and reduce the risk of STDs. It's two birds, one stone. Hello, sweet pie. What's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do you have any idea what you've done? It's because of people like you that even if we were to achieve fertility levels of replacement, there would still be a large population momentum due to the large youth of population. Shame. Here, use a condom or get a hobby. This is News at One with Abdullah Kadir, and you're watching the best newscast in Bangladesh. It's been decades since the first population policy was implemented in the 1970s to reduce population growth in hopes of an earlier population stability. As of today, the population rests at a staggering 160 million, the total fertility rate of 2.7. Bangladesh is also one of the most densely populated countries in the world, with almost 1,000 people per square kilometer. In order for a population to stabilize in the next 50 years, the government hopes to achieve replacement fertility level by 2020. Here we have Director General of Family Planning, Mohammed Kayyum, to talk about this matter. Mohammed. Thanks, Abdullah. So it was the Chinese policy that influenced and framing our policy. However, we are not going to make it mandatory. The government plans to promote the notion of no more than two children and one is best. Overpopulation is a heavy burden for our country, creating pressure on our national resources. If we fail to reduce the present birth rate, it will soon be difficult to meet the basic demands of our people. We are eager to develop a relationship with the Chinese population planning authorities for training our men and teaching them about modern uh, contraception and other related matters. Well, that sounds excellent. Looks like no more children for me. Well, this has been News at One with Abdullah Kadir. Now back to the sports desk.